Hey, what's going on guys? So before we get into the video, I wanna give a huge, huge spoiler warning to anybody who's an anime only viewer. If you don't wanna be spoiled about any information about an arc that depending on when the Naruto Boruto anime decides to cover the events that are happening in the manga, if it happens this year indeed, then I don't want you guys to be spoiled. I really don't because it'd be a travesty if you didn't walk in this fresh. However, if you're still here, I'm gonna assume you're okay with me talking about spoilers and I just wanna make it clear, a large portion of this video is gonna be a theory, but I am gonna be basing it based off of the information that we got in the Boruto manga. So if you're still here, I'm assuming you're okay with the spoilers. So today I wanna to discuss the possibility that Boruto Uzumaki could be responsible for the death of Naruto and what type of impact that would have on Boruto as a character. Now, the reason why I'm even thinking about this is when I was rereading the Boruto manga and in particular, when I was rereading the early parts of the Kwaki arc, one of the things that really, really stood out is after you had that insane battle where Kawaki's fighting against the member of Kara and he basically eviscerates the upper half of this dude's body and Kawaki passes out sometime after that and Boruto's looking down at the unconscious body of Kawaki and he says like, hey, let's just take this guy back to the Hidden Leaf Village, my old man and know what to do with him. And you get that panel where you see half of Naruto's face and then you see the other half of Kawaki's face and they're side by side. And that was the end of the chapter and you had Naruto looking out the Hokage office. And if I'm not mistaken, he was looking at the Hokage monument. And the reason why I wanted to kind of bring that up to you is there's a few different things that have happened in the Boruto anime that have made me me think about this scene now when you go all the way back to episode one of the Boruto anime where you had Boruto and Kawaki fighting on top of the Hokage monument one of the things you see is that the Hidden Leaf Village uh, Hokage monument with all the Hokage faces has been destroyed and when you get to the face of Naruto part of Naruto's face is destroyed now, why is that important? Well, when you go to episode one of Boruto, in particular, when you get to the end and you have Boruto and he's riding on that uh, rail car and it flies through the air, whose face does it crash into? It crashes into Naruto's face. And if I'm not mistaken, the part of the face that it crashed into was the same part of the face that the Boruto manga decided not to show us when it's showing us that side by side of Naruto and Kawaki and basically showing like, hey, their fates are intertwined. And then that should be the same part of the face that was destroyed on the Hokage monument. And if that's the case, that's foreshadowing. And that brings me to the title of this topic, the title of this video, which is is Boruto responsible for Naruto's death? Now you might say, well, what does that have to do with that? Well, if Boruto is responsible. That means that he brought Kawaki to the village, which we know happened. We know that Boruto brought Kawaki to the Hidden Leaf Village and Boruto and Kawaki are now living under the same roof. And because of Kawaki, Naruto has two members of the Kara organization in the Hidden Leaf Village right now. And he's potentially gonna have to fight both of them. He's gonna have to fight both of them. And obviously, He's not gonna lose to, uh, Ko no, not Kawaki, he's not gonna lose to Kashin Koji or to Delta this early on, but the heat is essentially on Naruto. Now the village has a magnet on it and it's gonna be drawing in the different members of Kara as well as other people who might wanna get a hold to uh, Kawaki because he is that vessel that Jigen was talking about. Now the other thing is, is if you look at what happens, right? Let's say Kawaki does kill Naruto. Let's say that the unthinkable happens and Kawaki says, Naruto, I poisoned your ramen bowl. After living in your house for all of these years, I saw that you like to eat ramen at this time and you like to eat it out of this particular bowl and you like to use this type of topping. Well, I changed out the toppings and I poisoned your ramen bowls. Let's say that happens. Or let's say that he just does the absolute disrespectful thing where he not only kills 
kills Naruto, but he does it after eating Naruto's last cup of Ichiraku ramen and after he cream pies Hinata and then after all that he kills Naruto. Let's say the unthinkable happens and it happens. And that's the true reason why Boruto says Kawaki. I never thought that you'd go this far. Let's say that happens, right? Let's say that happens, okay? <laughs> That's messed up Kawaki leaving the nuts hanging out of Boruto's mom. <laughs> like, like Kawaki, like he has the ultimate edge on Boruto at that point. Boruto can't say anything. He's like, if Boruto says anything, he's like, hey, I left the nuts hanging out your mom, man. <laughs> but no, like, like getting onto the topic, though. Getting back onto the topic. For real, though. Like, Boruto brought Kawaki into the Hidden Leaf Village. And if Kawaki does kill Naruto... All that rests at the, the feet of Boruto. That rests at the feet of Boruto. Because if he never did it, Kawaki would never be introduced to Naruto. And you can argue that Naruto would never potentially be caught off guard by Kawaki because we see Naruto going so far as to treat Kawaki like a second son. That is huge. Like in that chapter where they're in the flower shop and Naruto sees like, oh man, this kid Kawaki is deranged. He's been through a lot and he gives Kawaki the first hug that he's probably ever had in his life because Kwaki's father before that used to beat him and he actually sold him to Jigen. And so Boruto's father, Naruto, is showing Kawaki what it means to have a father. He's showing Kawaki a level of tenderness that he's never really experienced before. And given Naruto's character, once Naruto embraces you as one of his own, his guard is going to be down. It might not be down right now, but given that the Boruto versus Kawaki fight happens four years after the Momoshiki arc, and we're currently three years away from that, three years of living in the Uzumaki household is more than enough time for Naruto to let his guard down. And there's one thing that we all got to keep in mind when it comes to the Naruto series. It doesn't matter how powerful you are. It doesn't matter how powerful you are. It just takes one moment with your guard being down. And the perfect example of this is Madara Uchiha. Madara was playing around with Mike Guy. Mike Guy in the eighth gate, he's playing with them. Madara is fighting against Naruto and Sasuke. He's literally playing with them. He's not using his full power. He just accomplished his goal of activating the infinite Tsukiyomi. And once he sees Naruto and Sasuke are still around, he says, okay, let me stop playing around. And he thinks that he controls Zetsu. So his guard is completely dropped. He's basically gotten to a point where he's like, I've essentially won. There's nobody who can stop me. Let me just go ahead and take these guys out. And right when he says he's about to use full power, the one person he never thinks would betray him, the one person that he thinks he has full control over, being Zetsu is the one who essentially defeats Madara Uchiha. So when you look at the Naruto and Kawaki whole thing, when you look at that relationship, that's something that you have to take into account. If Naruto's treating this kid like a second son, Naruto is not going to be looking for any type of hostility from him. And if in that one moment Kawaki decides to betray Naruto for whatever reason, then that could explain why Naruto's been defeated. But I wanna know what you guys think. Do you think that's a good idea? And let me know if you guys think I'm onto something with the foreshadowing that I was kind of pointing out about how in the beginning of episode one, you had the Hokage monument destroyed, part of Naruto's face was destroyed. And then at the end of episode one, Boruto drives the rail car indirectly into the face of Naruto's Hokage statue and ends up cutting off like half of it and then in the Boruto manga you see part of Naruto's face covered up and it should be the same part of the face that was shown being destroyed in the Hokage monument during the same chapter it's revealed Kawaki's coming to Kona do you think I'm on to something on that let me know but as always guys if you like anything I had to say don't forget to comment rate subscribe share thank you so much for watching until the end of the video guys have an awesome day